there's there's a in, maybe incorrect intuitions about other people based upon who they are culturally, based upon your cultural lens. So always trying to challenge that. And that's really what it is to be a global citizen, giving people the benefit of the doubt, stepping back, being curious, asking questions, listening, learning about people's life, upbringing, and just asking good questions with that. What's up? I'm Ethan, your Real Life English Fluency Coach. Today, we have a lesson with a special guest, the CEO of Real Life English, the one and only Justin Murray. So you will learn about an amazing, life-changing book to learn English with, as well as how to develop a global perspective. Let's get into it. And if you are new here, every week we help you to understand fast speech without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like Asija, who says that our lessons have changed her life and she only wishes she'd known about them sooner. We want to help you to change your English and even your life too. But we can only do that if you hit the subscribe button and the bell on below so that you don't miss any new lessons. My first question for you, uh, a lot of people who know you well know that you're a really avid reader. So I was wondering, are there any books that you have most recommended to your students when you were teaching or maybe to learners in our community? Oh man, like <laughs> that's a really big question. You know, I, I think to recommend a book, it really depends on, on each person's journey where they're at, right? Because sometimes like you can pick up a book and it hits the spot. It's perfect right in that moment and it can change your life. But 10 years later, you read it and it's like, ah, oh, you know, I don't need that. So um, I'll take and take it with a grain of salt a little bit, but something that we've talked about a lot and I actually have it right here. So seven habits of highly effective people. This has been a, a life changer for me. I have tell it, that uh, books had up. some wear and tear. <laughs> yeah, I've read it several times, but um, it's been pretty integral in, in real life English as well. Mm -hmm. And we've read it together a couple times and it's an incredible book for, uh, for me. That book really uh, forced me to kind of step back and look at my life from a higher perspective, mm -hmm. um, who I am, what I want to do with things. A lot of people who know you well know that you're a really avid reader. If you have an avid interest in a certain activity, you don't enjoy doing it, do it as much as possible. Let's hear Ollie explain the meaning of this interesting adjective. Oh, I'm so excited about this question because I am an avid podcast listener. Also, what does it mean if you're an avid podcast listener? Oh, if I'm an avid podcaster, it means that I do it a lot and often, and I really enjoy doing it. I think to recommend a book, it really depends on, on each person's journey where they're at, right? Justin and I say this expression a lot. For example, when we talk about where someone is at in their journey learning English, we might talk about their level. However, what Justin means here is each person's self-improvement or growth in their lives over time. Because sometimes like you can pick up a book and it hits the spot. We say that something hits the spot when we are wanting or craving something and finally get it. Example, on such a hot day that ice cream really hits the spot. More figuratively, we can use it if a person finds something important or if it feels a need in that moment. Example, his advice really hits the spot. Another interesting word that you can use instead is resonate with something. Take a look at how Vanessa uses this word in another episode of Beyond Borders. When we moved back to the US, we weren't sure which city we wanted to live in. So we chose mm -hmm. a couple places that seemed to kind of resonate with what we lifestyle we wanted. And we couch mm -hmm. surfed with people in those cities for a couple weeks, just doing a little tour of the East Coast. And that's how we found where we live now. So. Um, I'll take, take it with a grain of salt a little bit. Generally, we say that you should take something with a grain of salt to mean that that thing might be an exaggeration or that you should be cautious in believing something. Maybe it's only partially true. Here's an example from when I interviewed Hadar. It's a good question. Um, I'm not sure if I'm an authority on that, so I, I probably would be, um, I would take like what, what I'd respond to that with a grain of salt, but I think like, just thinking about Americans and 
that there's a lack of education in the United States, like the people can be surprising for some people. One thing that I've noticed sometimes that people will confuse like Spanish speaker is like from Spain with like Mexican or something like that. And, and there tends to be kind of like a, a certain discrimination in, in that sense. Something that we've talked about a lot and actually have it right here, so. You would probably find it a bit tricky to mimic this sentence. If you want to incorporate some of the connected speech characteristics that Justin uses here, make sure that when you say the first part of this sentence, something that we've talked about a lot, there's linking between these two words. So not talked about, but talked about. Another detail to pay attention to is how Justin says a lot. Notice how the final T sounds in this word. He says lot and not lot. Something that we've talked about a lot. Something that we've talked about a lot. Now try mimicking the next part and actually have it right here. And actually have it right here, so. Justin joins and and actually and naturally and have it. And actually have it right here, so. And actually have it right here, so. These Beyond Borders interviews are a great way for you to practice listening to native English speakers while also learning about ways that you can improve your life. You can listen to this full interview with Justin and so many other experts and teachers anywhere where you enjoy listening to podcasts. However, what I would recommend is that you listen to it on the Real Life English app because it's the only place that you can listen with a full transcript and vocabulary definitions. What's more, you can practice your English speaking anytime, anywhere at the touch of a button. Now you will connect to other English speakers from around the world and also discover other cultures. I bet that all sounds too good to be true, right? Well, it is true and it's absolutely free. Sign up right now by clicking up here or down in the description below. Or you can just search for Real Life English in the Apple app or Google Play Store. Seven Habits, Highly Effective People. This has been a, a life changer for me. We say something is a life changer if it has the ability to change your life. Notice how it is used in this example. He won $10 million in the lottery. That's life-changing money. Another word in which we use changer in a similar way is when we say something is a game changer. This means it's revolutionary. Example, Facebook has been a game changer for our social lives. On the other hand, we use the word life in a similar way in the expression a lifesaver. This means something provides a welcome solution. Example, he was able to fix my computer when I most needed it. He was a lifesaver. I have tell it, uh, that book's had some wear and tear. <laughs> Justin has done a lot of marking up in that book. So it looks like this. If a book or anything has some wear and tear, it looks like it's not new because it's been used a lot. For example, this pair of shoes has some wear and tear. So I'd encourage you to comment below and share any books that have changed your life, that you've marked up a ton, and that have lots of wear and tear. And if you want more recommendations of books that can change your life, like Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, then check out this lesson next, where you can get five more of them. You can find that linked here or down in the description below. And if you can't watch it now, then be sure to add it to your watch later playlist so that you remember to watch it when you have time. Now, in the following clip, I asked Justin a question that we got from our community, The Fluency Circle. You were born and raised in the USA, and now you're currently living in Brazil. You've been in Brazil for a long time. So which cultural lens do you view the world through? <laughs> Oh man, my cultural lens is really mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think this is the thing about, I think being a global citizen in general is like maybe flexibilizing that cultural lens mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. also speaking with you know, global supporters and, and you know, interacting with, with you know, our learners from around the world, then it's, it's definitely like always stimulating like different perspectives. So I would say it's a mixture, right? Um, um, 
it's really hard to uproot completely your, your cultural lens from where you're, where, you're, where you're born. But in general, it's, it's like I sp we speak with a lot of Brazilians, so I can definitely see things from a, a Brazilian point of view, even, even when I'm speaking English, but especially when I'm speaking Portuguese. And, and then from there, I think it's just that that cultural lens for the world is just curiosity. Right? It's just being like coming to other people, just being open. Right? Just being like listening and being curious because sometimes I think you feel this too. It's like sometimes, you know, maybe, maybe it's mindfulness. <laughs> maybe it's like, you know, not judging people, not just recognizing that, that you, there's, there's a, in, maybe incorrect intuitions about other people based upon who <laughs> they are culturally, based upon your cultural lens. So always trying to challenge that. I think then that's where that mixture comes in, I think. And that's really what it is to be a global citizen, giving people the benefit of the doubt. Stepping back, being curious, asking questions, listening, learning about people's life, upbringing, and just asking good questions with that. So, which cultural lens do you view the world through? <laughs> oh man, my cultural lens is really mixed up. Literally, a lens is this part of a camera. It could also be a contact lens. However, sometimes we talk about the lens through which we view life. The idea is that we see things depending on our perspective or perception of reality, which can be very subjective. Listen to Justin again, talking about through which lens he views things, an American or Brazilian lens. I think this is the thing about, I think being a global citizen in general is like maybe flexibilizing that cultural lens and you know, <laughs> also speaking with global supporters and, and you know, interacting with, with you know, our learners from around the world then it's, it's definitely like always stimulating like different perspectives. So I would say it's a mixture, right? Earlier, he says that his lens is mixed up or that it's a mix between his American background and the Brazilian culture he's incorporated. Working with people that are from all over the world has stimulated him to see beyond only one cultural lens. If something stimulates you, it inspires you or provokes you to do something. Here's an example when I used this word in a previous podcast exercising, taking care of your body, doing something spiritual, whether that's like praying or meditating or getting out into nature, uh, reading a book or doing something that kind of like challenges you or stimulates you mentally. I would say it's a mixture, right? Um, um, it's really hard to uproot completely your, your cultural lens from where you're, where, where you're born. Much like a tree is rooted into the ground, a person, figuratively speaking, is rooted in his or her cultural background. To uproot means to remove a tree together with its roots from the ground. It could be said that it's impossible to uproot a person from where they come from. Here's an example where a past guest, Ali, uses root as a verb. So I don't feel like a global citizen now mm. so much, mostly because I'm just based here. Although maybe that's like a, the, maybe that's just the effect of, of the pandemic yeah. making me feel more, uh, more, more, more rooted at home. I can definitely see things from a Brazilian point of view, even when I'm speaking English but especially when I'm speaking Portuguese. We say especially to emphasize that something is more important or happens more with one particular thing than with others. For example, any person can listen to our Beyond Borders podcast. However, it is especially intended for English learners. People often mistake especially with special, which is an adjective that means not ordinary or usual. You might need to learn some special vocabulary or something, but still probably that level is going to suit you in most meetings and things like that even. You feel this too. It's like sometimes, you know, maybe maybe it's mindfulness. <laughs> maybe it's like you know, not judging people, not just recognizing that that you there's there's a in, maybe incorrect intuitions about other people. Mindfulness is a way of improving your mental state that involves paying close attention to everything that you are experiencing. It is often connected to the act of meditating. We also use the expression to be mindful of something. This has less to do with meditation and more with remembering something or being conscious of something. Example, I need to be more mindful of the amount of time I spend on my phone. Based upon who they are culturally, based upon your cultural lens. So always trying to challenge that. To challenge means to question or to refuse to accept something. I also think governments have like a thing against universities because like they challenge <laughs> something like, like that. intellectual thought. They challenge the government's decisions. Like how can we make those universities pay? I think then that's where that mixture comes in, I think. And that's really what it is to be a global citizen, giving people the benefit of the doubt, stepping back, being curious, asking questions, listening, learning about people's life, upbringing, and just asking good questions with that. If you give someone the benefit of the doubt, you decide that you will believe them. 
even though you are not sure that what that person is saying is true. Imagine you walk into your house and see a vase broken. You look at your dog, but you decide to give him the benefit of the doubt. The window's open. It could have been the wind, you think. To step back is a kind of mental exercise where you decide to analyze the situation without involving yourself. Maybe you even look at yourself in the third person. Lastly, a person's upbringing refers to how that person was raised or brought up by their parents. Example, he had a strict upbringing. My first question for you, uh, a lot of people who know you well know that you're a really avid reader. So I was wondering, are there any books that you have most recommended to your students when you were teaching or maybe to learners in our community? Oh man, like <laughs> that's a really big question. You know, I, I think to recommend a book, it really depends on, on each person's journey where they're at, right? Because sometimes like you can pick up a book and it hits the spot, it's perfect right in that moment and it can change your life. But 10 years later you read it and it's like, ah, oh, you know, I don't need that. So um, take, take it with a grain of salt a little bit. If you take something with a grain of salt, you are excited about something, are careful about believing something, try to remember something. But something that we've talked about a lot and I actually have it right here. So seven habits of highly effective people. This has been a, a life changer for me. Which of these similar collocations does not exist? Real changer, game changer, lifesaver. I have tell it, that uh, books had some wear and tear. <laughs> yeah, I've read it several times, but um, it's been pretty integral in, in real life English as well. Mm -hmm. And we've read it together a couple times and it's an incredible book for, uh, for me. That book really uh, forced me to kind of step back and look at my life from a higher perspective, mm -hmm. um, who I am, what I want to do with things. You were born and raised in the USA and now you're currently living in Brazil. You've been in Brazil for a long time. So which cultural lens do you view the world through? <laughs> oh man, my cultural lens is really mixed up. <laughs> I, th I think this is the thing about, I think being a global citizen in general is like maybe flexibilizing that cultural lens and you mm -hmm. know, also speaking with you know, global supporters and, and you know, interacting with, with you know, our learners from around the world, then it's, it's definitely like always stimulating like different perspectives. So I would say it's a mixture, right? Um, um, it's really hard to uproot completely your, your cultural lens from where you're, where, where you're born. Which word is closer in meaning to uproot? Remove, integrate, improve. But in general, it's, it's like I, we speak with a lot of Brazilians, so I can definitely see things from a Brazilian point of view, even, even when I'm speaking English, but especially when I'm speaking Portuguese. And, and then from there, I think it's just that that cultural lens for the world is just curiosity, right? It's just being like coming to other people, just being open, right? Just being like listening, being curious, because sometimes I think you feel this too. It's like sometimes, you know, maybe, maybe it's mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like, you know, not judging people, not just recognizing right. that, that you, there's, there's a, in, maybe incorrect intuitions about other people based upon who they are culturally based upon your cultural lens so always trying to challenge that i think then that's where that mixture comes in i think and that's really what it is to be a global citizen giving people the benefit of the doubt stepping back being curious asking questions listening learning about people's life upbringing and just asking good questions with that need more ideas of books that you can read in this lesson with vanessa from speak english with vanessa she discussed a book that changed her life let's check out a clip from that Digital Minimalism is the title of a book, and uh, when I found this book, <laughs> uh, it just kind of really clearly spelled out that this is the purpose of social media. The purpose of social media is to get your attention, so we shouldn't feel guilty about looking at social media. That's what it's there for, that's the purpose, and we are fulfilling that purpose, but also to be more intentional about our usage. So um, while I was reading this book, 
uh, one of the things that really stuck out to me was that with the rise of social media use, also there has been a pretty strong correlation with the rise of anxiety 